It's the weekend. Let's put a wrap on the week with your fabulous today news update. The COVID outbreak at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital is under control. In an update this evening, the hospital's executive chairman, Juliet Bino Sutherland, revealed that the three COVID positive patients discovered on Ward B7 earlier this week have been receiving care at isolation centres. COVID tests conducted on all remaining patients on the ward have been negative. The QEH is once again open to visitors or cases on B7 have been resolved. We wish to remind the public that the hospital is a mandatory mask wearing environment. We are insisting that our staff, visitors and patients comply with wearing a well-fitted mask and practice regular hand washing and good hand hygiene. These measures are critical to preventing the spread of infectious diseases. The fourth surge is characterized by a highly infectious variant and though illness may be milder than previous surges, we are still seeing deaths, so there is no room for complacency. Meanwhile, the latest COVID-19 update shows a total of 461 people, 194 males and 267 females tested positive for the viral illness from the 1,500 tests carried out on Thursday. The cases comprise 97 persons under the age of 18 and 364 who were 18 years and older. There were 94 people in isolation facilities, while 3,760 were in home isolation. COVID-19 related deaths stand at 403. In other news this Friday, amid the rising cost of living, leading economists suggest a wage hike is not the best option at this time. Speaking on this month's Caribbean Economic Forum last evening, ben Central Bank Governor Cleveson Heen said government could introduce temporary measures to assist the vulnerable. We, we run the danger of trying to uh, have wage increases that are adapting to inflation, which is a, a sorry, or, or to price levels, which are a temporary cycle. And when these things change, you've already embedded those wage increases in, and therefore they're more difficult to reverse. So you need, I think, uh, transfers perhaps that are time bound. So you may be doing it for a particular period of time, so as to be able to allow people to be able to adapt. But it is not a permanent uh, feature of the uh, government's expenditure or tax or tax system. Noted regional economist Marla Dukaran supports assistance for low-income citizens and pensioners, but she advises that any move towards a wage increase must go hand-in-hand hand with increased productivity. In the absence of increases in productivity, wage increases that simply reflect inflation and which are completely delinked from performance will only serve to make whatever you are producing uncompetitive over time and drive you out of the market, which doesn't benefit anyone. We have to ensure that when we are negotiating for higher wages, we are also adding higher value. AgroFest is on and will be held on May 28 and 29 at Queen's Park. At an official launch today, Chairman of the Festival, James Paul, revealed that this year's showcase has been scaled down, but he's anticipating some 200 exhibitors that will include interests from Guyana and Suriname. We expecting around 200 exhibitors. That's, what, that's our target that we would like to get to, 200 exhibitors. Um, so far, we are at 123, up to yesterday. But we've had some more persons since yesterday, since that number. And then we have to go to the look at the Guyana exhibitors. So we're looking for 200. Um, and I, th I think that, you know, we should be able to, to, to handle them quite comfortably, taking into consideration the spatial considerations. Um, you would have mentioned about um, the Caribbean aspect. Mm -hmm. um, you're bringing Guyana as well mm -hmm. as Suriname. Mm -hmm. uh, how many exhibitors can you expect from those two countries? And also, what other countries will be involved? So, well, this book will carry calm on the Broadway. I, the thing is, at this time, I'm not sure the number. I mean, at one point in time, we were talking about 50 ex exhibitors in Guyana. But I'm not sure at this stage. Um, I know right now, for instance, the construction of the house that they spoke about is going to start sometime next week at Queen's Park. Um, and that, we, we, you know, we've spatially arranged certain things, so that's going to start next week. So there's some activities that are actually going to start um, next week and then going into the following week. Um, but we're looking at around 50 overall. Yeah, at one point in time, we were talking about 50 ex exhibitors in Guyana, but I'm not sure at this stage. Um, 
I know right now, for instance, the construction of the house that they spoke about is going to start sometime next week at Queen's Park. Um, and that, you know, we've spatially arranged certain things, so that's going to start next week. So there's some activities that are actually going to start um, next week and then go into the following week. Um, but we are looking at around 50 overall. Um, Senior Manager at Pinnacle Fields, Adrian Yard, said the island truly needs AgroFest this year. He noted that while the agriculture sector was facing severe challenges, its importance cannot be underestimated. We look to the future with great optimism. Within CARICOM, we see the desire to ensure that food security and food sustainability truly exist. And we see the preparations being made to ensure that this truly becomes a reality. This is the time that we can show the entire world that a small island development state like Barbados can devise and implement programs to feed its people. But we don't do this alone. We do this with the help of our CARICOM neighbors. On the sidelines of today's events, the president of the Barbados Agricultural Society, Peter Chase, made a call for government to provide much-needed support for livestock farmers and feed manufacturers hard hit by rising feed prices. What I'm asking for is that the Prime Minister and her office step in to help the agriculture sector in once again, because they have done that before and at the start of the pandemic where grain prices went spiraling out of control. Um, again, the war in uh, with Russia and Ukraine has caused us some pain um, and we're asking for subsidies to keep, be able to keep the prices down and certainly in the livestock uh, sector. Um, Pinnacle, who buys from ADM, is under some pressure um, to take up the price. Um, and we're asking that if we can get a subsidy, um, hopefully we can keep the prices the same um, for the meats. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sardine. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. In regional news, a deadly explosion hit a well-known hotel in downtown Havana today, killing at least 18 people and sending 74 more to hospital. Speaking from the scene on Cuban television, the Cuban president said the blast at the historic hotel Saratoga appeared to have been caused by a gas leak. He stressed that it was not a bomb or an attack. Hundreds of Cubans and tourists alike gathered near the property under the hot sun as police cordoned off the area around the hotel. State TV reported search and rescue efforts were ongoing and they said it was unclear whether additional victims remained trapped in the rubble. On the international front, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson was on Friday left to reflect on a string of losses at local elections in England in a midterm test of his popularity after a string of scandals. Among the shocking, uh, some predicted results, uh, the loss of Wandsworth, which has now gone to Labour, Barnet, that's gone to Labour, and Westminster. Westminster, that since its creation in 1964, uh, has been traditionally conservative. Westminster that has the Westminster Parliament, the House of Commons, the House of Lords. Westminster that has 10 Downing Street, the official residence of the British Prime Minister. The British Prime Minister, of course, where we've had this series of revelations over the last uh, few months, um, where he's been embattled by Partygate, uh, accused and found guilty by the police and having to pay a fine for a breach of the very strict lockdown rules, the very rules uh, that he mandated for the rest of the country. So that is a big win for Labour in London, but they have much more modest gains across the rest of England. 
That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 